My name is Martha Carr and I'm a professor of educational psychology at the University of Georgia. Uh, the types of jobs our students get with a PhD are varied. Uh, we, I would say most people go on to a university or a college. Uh, sometimes these uh, in, uh, involve research settings, so they will spend some of their time doing research in the schools. Uh, sometimes it will be a strictly teaching setting, so their job will be to uh, teach educational psychology to undergrads primarily. Uh, and that's, I would say most people go on, off into one of those careers, but we also have people who've gone off and worked in nonprofits. Uh, typically these nonprofits uh, create educational materials for students uh, or educational materials for schools. Uh, we have had students uh, work in, uh, the, in the State Department in terms of uh, educational settings, uh, so they might uh, also be working for a, a school district. Um, and sometimes periodically they will go on to uh, go back into the classroom. We've had some teachers who have been teaching for a while and they are interested in educational psychology, they want to learn more about learning. Uh, they get a PhD and then they go back into a uh, you know, back into the classroom. So uh, we it's very uh, varied in terms of where people go, and it really depends on your interests. What you'll be doing in, when you get into a PhD program is varied. Uh, you'll be taking some basic courses in cognition, uh, development, uh, learning. Uh, the basic theory that underlies uh, educational psychology. Uh, you'll be taking statistics classes and research methods classes because it is a research degree and you will need those. But much of the work you'll be doing will be focused on developing your area of expertise. So that will involve your work on your master's thesis if you enter without a master's degree or it will involve your work on your dissertation. That involves a lot of library work, a uh, considerable amount of reading and writing and so one of the other things that you will be doing is developing your writing skills. Uh, what uh, typically there are several major points uh, in your deg degree program. One is uh, the master's degree, uh, the master's thesis. So if you do not have one, you will probably need to do a master's thesis. And that's essentially a research project that you do with your advisor and you will need, probably need to propose it. Uh, you'll need to defend it in front of your advisor and several other people. Uh, and that is a big project that will take at least a year. If you have a master's degree already, then you'll be doing comprehensive or preliminary exams. And those are involved, sometimes involve a sit-down exam, it's up to the place where you go, or it can involve an exam where you write several papers. It really depends on the place that you end up, the program that you end up in. Uh, once you get those behind you, and uh, you'll, it'll be time to go on and do the dissertation, and that involves proposing a dissertation, a research project, running it, writing it up, an and analyzing the data, and then defending that completed project. And that's really the big part of the doctoral program that students sometimes get bogged down in. And you need to be careful not to get bogged down and not to slow yourself and your work towards that degree, to spend time to do that and not to focus exclusively on classes. Uh, the most important thing is to find a school and an advisor that matches your research interests. As I said, this is a research degree and you need to find someone who's working in the area that is of interest to you. And in fact, most advisors will not accept a student who's not willing to work in their area of expertise. 
So look around uh, at the faculty who are in the educational psychology department, find out what types of research they're doing, and if there isn't something that you're interested in, I would strongly recommend that you contact that person and ask them about their work. It's a great way to really kind of find out what it would be like to work with that person, and they probably would be very happy to talk to you. So contact the school and contact the uh, potential advisor. Once you find about four or five schools that have people working in an area that you're interested in, go ahead and apply. You might want to find out whether or not there's financial aid or, and what the cost is of the university or the college because that is going to be an important factor. Uh, find out about assistantships. Do they have them? Are they available? Uh, when do you apply for them? Uh, we have uh, a deadline of January to get applications in to be made uh, uh, so that, uh, that we'll use when we're considering assistantships and if you don't get your application in by then you're not going to get an assistantship. So be very careful with that. Uh, sometimes we get students who apply at the last minute and they may be very good students but all the assistantships are gone. Uh, once you get into a school, the next big thing that you need to do is get into a good routine with your advisor. Meet with them on a regular basis and make sure that you're making progress towards either the master's, completion of the master's thesis if you're working on that, or work towards your comprehensive exams or your dissertation. And working with your advisor is going to be really critical in terms of making good progress in those areas. Uh, I sometimes will meet, uh, typically will meet with students once a week or once every two weeks just to make sure that they're staying uh, uh, on the program, continuing to work and progress towards a thesis or a dissertation. Um, you'll be taking a lot of courses and there's a tendency to focus a lot on the courses uh, and not focus on the thesis or the comprehensive exams or the dissertation and that can be a problem for some students because what happens is they do everything else but that, but do work on the thesis, but work on the dissertation, the comprehensive exams and time goes by and they find that they are not making good progress. So you need to make sure that you work every day on these projects schedule in work, uh, work time for that because otherwise it's going to be very, very difficult to complete the degree program.